Namaste. So here we're going to continue with our series on dreams. And dreams are real. What do I mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean, what do you mean? Dreams are real, and the proof is that if people are deprived of dreams, they lose their mental health. This has been known you know, for a long time. Huh? How long can you stay awake? How long can you stay in Jagrat consciousness? Consciousness of the world and the senses and all that. I think the Guinness World Record is something like a week. Huh? And after a few days, people start to hallucinate. They start to dream while they're awake. They start to see things that aren't really there. So sleep is absolutely necessary for our mental health. And sleep, discussed in the Vedas, as another state of consciousness. In other words, it's just as valid, just as real as waking consciousness. When you're in a dream, doesn't it seem real? Huh? Where is this body, the meat body, huh? When you're in a dream, this body completely disappears. The senses are completely inactive. I mean, maybe if there is some loud noise or some other commotion around your body while you're sleeping, you might wake up, you know? But normally, we don't hear, we don't see, we don't smell anything. But what we are experiencing in the dream seems like this is real. And it's so strange because, I mean, have you watched your dreams? The people in the dream seem real, like we know them. We even know sometimes what they're going to say, what they're going to do. And yet, who are those people? Uh, in most cases, we can't even put a name to them. We don't know who they are in Jagrat consciousness. Or maybe they have no existence in Jagrat. But then, as soon as we're in the dream, they seem like real-life people, and we feel like we know them. So how is this possible? Well, it's because svapna, or dream consciousness, is a state of consciousness. This is given in the Vedas. And just like waking consciousness, dream consciousness is temporary. That means it comes and goes. Yes, human beings have leveraged dream consciousness by superimposing it on waking consciousness. We call it thinking. <laughs> but really, what we are doing when we're thinking is that we're dreaming about having a conversation with ourselves. Oh, that's a very interesting concept. Yes, hmm, we have to look into that. <laughs> so I'm, I was just reading, speaking of looking into it, I'm just reading a scientific paper on nature, uh, the, you know, one of the most prestigious scientific journals there is, that Targeted dream incubation at sleep onset increases post-sleep creative performance. So, as usual, you know, the scientific bias is to measure everything according to some uh, Jagrat consciousness, uh, that if I do something related to sleep, it only has meaning if it affects what happens later in waking consciousness. This is a typical bias, but actually it's very indicative of the fact that there's a relationship between dreaming and waking consciousness. And it's very interesting because I've been doing this for years. Any great sadhu, any devotee, anybody who knows really the power of mantra will chant the mantra as they go to sleep. And, of course, this influences the dreams, and it also influences waking consciousness. 
For example, it's well known that the last thought you have before you go to sleep at night is the first thought you'll have spontaneously in the morning when you wake up. So if you chant your mantra, if you think of God in any way, but especially if you think of your Ishta Devata and your relationship with God or Goddess, then when you wake up in the morning, that's the first thing that's going to pop into your mind. So there is a relationship besides the superimposition of dreams that we call thinking. Uh, there is a relationship between what you do when you go to sleep and how you feel or how you think when you wake up. And it goes deeper than that. In our series on Ch uh, God GPT, we've covered how when you go into sushupti, deep sleep, the dreams that you have had before you go into it then influence the creative power of sushupti, which is Shiva, but more specifically Rudra, because he is also involved in the material creation. Sadashiva is outside. He's Brahman, he's not Nibbana. So Shiva, as the creative force, does not accept any uh, causes. He never becomes the effect. He is the cause. So the dreams that we bring with us into Sushupti don't have any effect on Sushupti, but they do have an effect on how we are when we come out of Sushupti, the dreams and then the waking consciousness that follow it. And... I guess sooner or later, one of these days, the scientists will get around to experimenting with that. I'm not sure how you would do that. But from a yogic perspective, what you do is you fill your mind with impressions of the quality that you want to attain in your existence, in your waking life and in your dream life. Dream consciousness and waking consciousness are exclusively dependent on sushupti. Sushupti is the cause, and they are the effects. So, when we go into sushupti at night, it seems like ignorance. It seems like the senses and the mind are all covered up, and then there's nothing. But it's not nothing. It's causation. And in causation, there is no acceptance of an effect, no acceptance of other causes, because that, how can you cause the cause? <laughs> the cause is, is the uh, reason for the effect. So if sushupti is nothing but causation, then, of course, there are no impressions. There are no experiences, no objects, apparently no consciousness, but actually there is consciousness. It's just that there is nothing for it to be conscious of. So these three states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and deep sleep, are conditioned consciousness. Why? Because they're temporary. And they also depend on other things. And the thing they mainly depend upon is Turiya. Now, we've been over this in our series on consciousness and so on, but let me go over it again. Turiya is the fundamental, unconditioned awareness. The awareness that is aware, whether it has an object or not, because it is self-aware, awareness of awareness. And Turiya is the basic awareness behind the other states of consciousness. This is like a mirror. It reflects whatever you put in front of it. So if we put waking consciousness in front of it, then that's what we experience, or dream consciousness, or sushupti, deep sleep, where there are no objects because it's causative. 
And this consciousness of consciousness or awareness of awareness also makes Turiya aware of itself. So this is Brahman. This is Sadashiva. This is the highest level of consciousness. It's unconditioned. That is, it's not affected by anything else. It doesn't have a beginning, a middle, or an end. Hmm, that sounds a lot like nirvana. Nirvana, huh? And indeed, it is. And it's also Brahman. It's also enlightenment. It's also self-realization and so on. All these things that have been named as the object or the goal of religious and spiritual practice are within uh, Turiya, or they are Turiya. Now, what does this have to do with the dreams again? <laughs> that dreams, while we're in Swapna consciousness are real, just as real as our waking experience. And the fact that they're connected with waking experience and have an effect on waking experience, as discussed in that paper that I quoted, I'll put a link to it in the video description. You can read it too. Uh, they show that dreams have a real effect. Well, anybody who's ever had a bad dream like being chased by a, a, a tiger or a monster or a ghost or something. They know that when you wake up from that dream, your body is experiencing fear symptoms, isn't it? You're breathing hard, you know, maybe you're sweating or shaking, you know. So, yes, the dream can affect the physical body. But that doesn't mean the physical body is real, absolutely real. Just as it doesn't mean, just because we see different people and different things in dreams, doesn't mean that they're absolutely real either. Because the thing that all these three conditioned states of consciousness have in common, waking, dreaming, and deep sleep, is that they're temporary. So because of the stress of waking consciousness... We have to change out of it into dream consciousness so we can digest the experiences we've had. And then we have to go into deep sleep to recover our strength. We have to touch on the unconditioned. We have to, as Ramana Maharshi says, sleep in the lap of Brahman. And without this rest, again, sleep research has shown that we can't maintain mental health, can't even maintain physical health without proper rest. So, sleep and dreams are real, as real as waking consciousness. They're both temporary, so they're both ultimately illusory. <laughs> but that's only compared to the absolute state, Turiya. For the relative experience, they're certainly real within each of their contexts. So what does this have to do with spiritual life? That's what the rest of this series is going to be about. It's going to be about how to create a dream that takes you to the highest stage of self-realization. Because since self-realization and meditation are about consciousness. Consciousness also includes dreaming, also includes deep sleep. So how we manage our consciousness, how we prime our consciousness, and how we direct our consciousness has definite implications for the attainment of enlightenment. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs>